nine o'clock. I've been up since seven and the sun's shining and I had no idea what I wanted to do today. I was thinking about going to the beach. I was thinking about going to the sauna. And I was thinking about going... No, I wasn't thinking about going anywhere else. So while I was thinking about what I wanted to do today, I put the computer on, put the laptop on, got onto YouTube and watched a couple of videos to get some motivation and inspiration and ideas about basically all the things I want to do anyway. So the first thing I did was, was uh, check out some videos on, on free running. Uh, again, to motivate me to exercise for something in the future but just, just to motivate me. And one video took me to another video, took me to another video, uh, found this great one of some, some guy who's, who's been doing it, he's about 25, he's been doing it for 10 years, um, free running, and he even got his dad and his little brothers to do it. And, and his dad's pretty good, and so he was about 50. Um, at the time. So that gives me some inspiration. And then I found another video coming from there about uh, f training to do flips because that's really what I want to do first. That's my first um, goal physically is to learn to do flips and the free running will come later and then after that I want to do some, uh, I want to develop more into calisthenics trainings. Um, but that's all in the future. First flips and all these little videos, they, they do inspire me and that's the thing that gets me up and out and actually doing something. And yesterday I was sort of looking on YouTube for other vloggers, uh, again to get some inspiration and motivation and, and ideas for how I, how I need to develop my own vlog and I found this video now and uh, it, it's on, what's it called, let me, let me have a look at this, can't see without my glasses Top 10 most popular vloggers on YouTube Now I know a, a few vloggers, um, not personally of course that I've seen, which started me off, and uh, you know, most of them uh, I'm not really interested in because they're, they're just doing crazy pranks and, and things like that. And then any would be vlogger is gonna sometime, sooner or later, discover Casey Neistat. I've done that, and he's sort of like the um, the, the big inspiration, um, but. I'm not Casey Neistat and I do not want to end up copying him and only him and, and that has been the problem. I'm getting to the point where I think the only thing, way to, to vlog is to, to do it the Casey Neistat way and I know it's not and I have a different personality from him and I really need to find out, find some vloggers who are doing it with um, with a personality that's not so... somebody with a personality that matches my own. Well, why would I need to do that? Why don't I just develop my own? Because these guys, they all, you know, the first guys who started vlogging, or the first people who started vlogging, they didn't have any, anybody to copy. And I should just do it my way and let that develop. But as I say, I need the I had the inspiration to get me moving, to get me motivated. So that's what I decided to do for this morning. Um, whether I, I carry this on all day, I don't know. But this morning, I'm just going to sit back now with my coffee and I'm just going to watch this video and click through to each of the 10 best YouTubers and see what their personality is like. And I'll tell you about that when I've watched it.
um, who I think is who I think is good, who I think is not worth watching for me then. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch some more videos, so I'll see you in a bit. Well that was pretty uninspiring. Just doing normal stuff. I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm not pranking. And um, Casey Nice stuff is still the best. It's just going off. It's um, I mean maybe there are other ones out there, but certainly not known as, as much because there's always the same and there's about five or ten of them who uh, come up on in all these these um, top tens because they're the ones with all the viewers and all the subscribers and they've been doing it for quite a few years so uh, it's funny I was looking at the um, the early videos of these people and yeah, Casey and I started apart, all of them are going to start somewhere and the uh, introduction videos and the first few videos are pretty boring and uh, and I don't, I don't find anything inspiring in, in the content at all. Well, Casey Nace, Casey Neistat, I mean, he was, he was already, um, he'd already got his style all worked out before he even started vlogging as a filmmaker, and, uh, and he's just developed from there. So what do I do now? Hmm. Stop watching other vloggers. Probably that's the best idea. And just do, just do my own thing. let it develop. So it's a funny thing this vlogging experience. What I haven't done yet, which I've noticed, is really just carry the camera around with me and uh, and film moments, the normal moments when I'm just being myself. Everything I've done till now has, has been with a set idea and um, the whole, it, it's more, been more like, like making little movies, uh, little impressions, little statements or something. But, not just filming myself in the in-between moments. I'm thinking I, I want to get used to doing that as well. Uh, not missing the moments because sometimes when I've, I've, I've filmed a scene and I've ridden away uh, or walked away um, and I think why didn't I film myself walking away? Why didn't I film that little bit before or that little bit afterwards and I, I notice lots of little moments that could have been uh, sort of fillers during the day but I notice them too late and the sort of missed opportunities for creating uh, an impression of my daily life uh, so that's pretty much what I've decided to do today um, no proper theme. Um, I'm just I'm gonna spend the whole day at home 
I know it's a nice day outside, but I don't think I'll be going out. Um, stay at home, I'll do some, some of my exercises, I'll do some music, I'll do some meditation. The things I usually do on my, day, my, on my free days. And, uh, and just catch those little moments. And if any thoughts come up in my head that I, I, I want to speak about, instead of making a special edition of a vlog to talk about those things, I can just um, just touch on them. Uh, and it's good for my in front of camera talking ex experience. Sounds like we're gonna have a lot of planes flying over my house today. They change the flight paths now and again, depending on the weather, I think. And uh, it sounds like one of the days when they're all coming over this way. Yep, lots of planes. So one of the things that plays on my mind when I think about vlogging is, uh, especially in the beginning when I started, um, was whether my life was interesting enough to vlog. I mean, it is. It's interesting. It's interesting for me. But, you see, I live... Um, quite an isolated lifestyle. I have my work and sometimes I see the people I work for, sometimes I don't, a lot of the time I don't. I work alone and I come home and I live alone. And I don't have a great social life, I don't have a lot of friends here. Um, I don't actually do a lot that takes me out of the house and this is a choice of my own making you know I mean I've uh, I worked for 15 years in schools and I was surrounded by hundreds of people every single day and that's with three different schools so you know if I go out into the city now or walk around this area you now I'm bound to bump into somebody I knew I know or knew from from those school times and but that's hundreds of, of teachers hundreds of parents hundreds of children they were part of my every single day eight hours nine hours a day I was surrounded by people and since I quit that job or that sort of work I've really been enjoying a solitary existence. It doesn't mean I'm a recluse or anything. I mean, I still have friends and I still see them and I still go out the door um, and to be among people. But my activities, my daily activities, do not involve other people except my Tuesday evenings when I play music with my friend Geert. Um, but mostly the, the solitary activities. My music is solitary. My songwriting is solitary. Um, my meditations are solitary. Uh, my training at the moment is solitary. Oh, well, that might change. And I spend a lot of the time contemplating everything. Contemplating life, contemplating my life, contemplating what life is, what reality is. And that's why I do a lot of writing. And I, I, I pretty much start my day pretty much every day. And I've been doing this for years. 
writing in, in my diary um, about the thoughts that come into my head during the day, my observations, my uh, um, understandings, my insights. And that's not something you can share on the camera. And in my meditations now, in my development of, of, of going out of body, that's also not something that I can, I can show on the camera. I can talk about it, but I can't take the camera with me. So my daily life, in most cases, is an inner life. And that is something that's really difficult to vlog, except as a sort of talk video. And, uh, and then I come to the, the, um, the question, do I need to make my daily life more active visually in order to make a vlog? And then I think, well, that, that's, that's crazy because then it's not my life. It's a life I'm making just to vlog. Um, and I had this discussion with a friend a few days ago about this and I, I, I came to the conclusion that no, I, I have to just be who I am and film whatever I can film and talk about the rest, the rest of it. But after that conversation, I actually realised that no, what I want at this moment in my life is actually to get out more, to do more things. Not just to vlog, but to actually enjoy a more active lifestyle and get out of the solitude that I've been living in for the last couple of years. So in a way, vlogging is going to be the impetus, the drive that actually gets me to do that to change my life, to make it more active, which in turn gives me more visually to vlog about. So we'll see how that goes, but today, <laughs> today is, is just, just me at home. A normal day at home with Mike Mulhan on his own. And I'm not going to go outside today just to film something that I think viewers would expect. It's a strange thing. It's a strange thing, this vlogging. It's, um, it's very confronting and, and it's very interesting to see what it does with you. We live our lives sort of on the run every single day and we don't stop for a minute to actually observe ourselves from the outside. And vlogging actually makes you start thinking about that. You're actually putting yourself in a third person perspective and watching you live, watching yourself live your life and then editing that <laughs> to actually show somebody else or even view yourself ah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a strange and, and fascinating activity Well, that's enough of that for now. I might uh, talk a little bit more on that a little bit later. What I just realised, or, or what I just decided I could do, is, is uh, show you my living room and explain why I've done it like this. Because it's not your standard living room. So that's it from this side.
that's it from this side it's quite a big room actually so the story of this room goes like this about t up to two years ago about two I don't know, about five years ago I quit my job and uh, I bought a camper bus and uh, I went traveling and then about two years ago I came back to Amsterdam now in the meantime in those traveling years I had somebody looking after this house paying the rent for me and this guy is an American and he had this room and the back room here and he had another friend, a girl, helping him to pay the rent and she had what is now my bedroom. So when I came back, the house was full and I moved up into my attic room. Now, I've got a pretty good attic room when it's tidied up, so I, I lived there, but it was fine because it was even bigger than my camper bus, so I had plenty of room. And I enjoyed it up there. But then the girl left and I came downstairs and moved into this, uh, my bedroom and shared the house with this American guy. And um, then he left. And suddenly I found myself with this enormous house all to myself. And I'm so used, I was so used to, uh, to living small, living in a camper bus or living in the attic, living small and simple, that I wondered what the hell am I going to do with all this space? And I didn't want to just fill it up with boring stuff and make it look like everybody else's house, with a dining area over there, uh, with a settee and a TV cast and, and, uh, and a music system and bookshelves on the wall with all the books and a couple of posters around and just turn it into a very standard living room which pretty much everybody has. It doesn't matter how rich people are, how poor people are, how big the houses, how small the houses everybody's pretty much got exactly the same setup. They've got the table to eat off, they've got the settee to sit on, they've got a couple of extra chairs, they've got the pictures on the wall, they've got the books in the cast, they've got the TV in the corner, and so on and so forth. And I thought, what is it? Why, why is everybody, why does everybody have exactly the same living setup? Practical, obviously. But I was used to living out of a bus and I wanted something different. So I decided, well, okay, if I've got all this space, I don't use this room for living in. I live in my bedroom and it's got all the space I need. I've got my bed in there, I've got my table in there, and I've got my chair in there. And that's really all I need, somewhere to sit, to write, to work on the computer, um, and then somewhere to sleep. So what am I going to do with all this room? And I thought, well, what I really enjoy, one of the most pleasurable things for me is to sit in cafes and write. And some of my favourite cafes are part of spiritual and yoga centres. And they've got a specific atmosphere. And... At the time when I came back two years ago, I was pretty much, or pretty much deeper than I am now into that spiritual um, way of life, and and I enjoyed those surroundings. They inspired me. They they they, they were colourful. They helped me to feel um, more connected. So I th and. And I have a friend who, whose house was also an inspiration with an, an orange wall and, and uh, wall hangings and um, candles, an 
and into it sticks and little bits and pieces all over the place that brought nature into the ha into the house into the room and that was uh, one of the um, inspiration inspiration uh, locations and I, I decided to sing that that I would do that with this house but on a grander scale and I found some more pictures of, of yoga centers and uh, meditation rooms online and used them all to, to inspire me to the layout of, of all this. First thing was everything out, just completely empty space and then I started finding things. Uh, I didn't actually buy a lot, I found things <coughs> and, um, and brought them in and eventually it turned to this and this is pretty much finished now, I really don't want to add anything more to it. But I also had this idea that it wouldn't be just for me. If I could turn this into a sort of spiritual space, then I could invite groups f to come here and use this space for free to hold meditations, group meditations, or little talks, or whatever. Um, so I put that out online on Facebook and invited people to come. And I've had a few people in here, but it's never really took off. And but the people who do come here really like it, and it it's something different. And and I like to I like the idea that I have something different in my own space. Um, I could give it up tomorrow, all of it, and go live in a bus again, if I had a bus to live in. Um, and money coming in so I could actually travel again. But while I've got it, this is, this is just an amazing place for me. And I like it, because I can, I can throw everything aside and use this as a sort of room for my own exercises, as you've seen on some of the other vlogs. And I can put it back, I can sit here and play guitar uh, and feel inspired, which is different from sitting at a table or sitting in the other room on the chair. And, uh, or I can meditate here. I don't actually meditate in this room anymore. I meditate in the other room because I meditate for a different, it's not for a spiritual growth um, experience, it's, uh, it's more to enter out-of-body states and you need a, a completely different way of sitting for that. But it's amazing, Amsterdam is great for this. It's amazing what you can find off the street to actually bring into the house and you don't have to spend any money to, to create a sort of vibe or an atmosphere similar to this. I'll show you. Okay, this meditation cushion was actually a birthday gift. The guitar is mine, of course, and that big wall hanging, I bought that. The yoga cushions came from a friend of mine who uses his place and brought extra cushions along. And these cushions belong to the former, to the American guy, and the other cushions I found on the street. All the plants. have been given to me. This chair, I've had that for years. I found that on the street. The dream catcher I made myself. Japanese blinds. I found those on the street. Can't believe that. And all the little tree branches, of course, They were found in the forest, including the bits and pieces, which is what my, uh, my brother brought over from Spain. He's pretty much into meditation, just like I am. And this little bamboo table, I found that on the street as well.
So this whole room actually didn't cost me much. And it's very simple. And it's a nice way of living. And this is the other room, the side, the side room, or the extension of the living room. This used to be, in the beginning years, it used to be, when I first got the house, this used to be my bedroom and studio. Well, my son had the, the other bedroom. But uh, I use this for guests, and it's also a nice place to come. Because I don't have a settee, I have these two areas to sit, where you can our groups or small groups can sit opposite each other and have conversations if they don't want to be in the big room sitting on the floor. But this is my meditation spot. I'll show you what my setup is. I don't have a proper recliner and for meditations where you, your goal is to get out of body, you do not want to be flat because you'll fall asleep, but you want to be comfortable enough to be able to get into a deeper state. And this is uh, how I get into that reclining state. And with some uh, a mask to, to, to put out the light. I can sit here quite comfortably for one and a half hours. And transport myself, sometimes, into other worlds. Actually, I fancy meditation now, so I think I'll do that. And I'll see you in about an hour and a half. Well, that was interesting. One and a half hours, almost to the minute. Woke up to something. Sounded like gunfire outside, but this is uh, probably isn't. It's probably just somebody breaking twigs. It's been quiet on the street all morning. It feels like a Sunday or it's a Saturday morning. And that's probably because a lot of people are still on holiday. But then you get something like this noise below me. You think, I wonder what all that racket is. I just found this really nice vlogger, a really nice vlog, took a got, and he vlogs his uh, travels on a powered paraglider. This is actually the dream. Just been reading an article on corned beef. One of my clients gave me a couple of tins of corned beef a few weeks ago and then she found this article in the paper and gave me this yesterday. You can see it. It's an old electricity building that's been converted into a sort of artwork as a big can of corned beef. The biggest tin of corned beef in Amsterdam. I'm going to go down to the cellar now. It's, uh, I really got to fix at least one of my bikes, so I'm going to have a look at them. Found it. It's a quite a big hole. 
Okay, now I'll see if I can uh, see if I can repair it. There is the culprit. Well, that's bike one done. Let's have a look at the other bike. So, bike two is fixed. Let's see which one stays fixed tomorrow morning. Dirty business mending punches. But I've deserved a coffee. So I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to have a coffee. I think that's it for vlogging today. Unless anything special comes up. I can spend the evening. Editing. Job well done, I hope. <laughs>